Okay, Poisson's equation. We kind of skipped it. We went from Laplace's equation to the eigenvalue equation. And it's because this will sort of be a quick discussion because I'll just give you, well, maybe we'll solve one problem, but it's mostly an indication of strategy because there's only one issue that I can raise about Poisson's equation. So as an example, let's solve, rather than Laplace's equation, Laplace equals zero, let's solve Poisson's equation. Laplacian's e Laplacian equals a given function on the unit circle. So we're once again in polar coordinates. Laplacian equals, and I picked a radial function because to do this analytically, you have to have a very special right-hand side. And of course, we still have boundary conditions. Let's choose the same boundary conditions as before. U on the boundary, what is it, cosine two theta? But whatever it is, you kind of have to break up the problem into two steps. The steps sound as the steps that we took before when we were solving Laplace's equation, which is find functions that satisfy the differential condition and then put them together into a sum because, the, because Laplace's equation was a linear equation and then adjust the coefficient so that the, so that the boundary conditions are matched. Now here the strategy needs to be a little bit different. That's because this equation would still be called linear, but instead of being ax equals b, excuse me, instead of being ax equals zero, like Laplace's equation, this is more akin to ax equals b. Do you guys agree with me? Operator applied to a function equals something given, ax equals b. So we'll use the same way of thinking, approaching this problem. We'll find I don't want to use any, I don't want to use terms like particular solution because those are more ODE terms. In partial differential equations, even if a concept works, it would only work in a very limited, for a very limited class of equations. But it's kind of like a particular solution. And in this case, maybe it's perfectly fair to call it a particular solution. So what we're going to do is we're going to find one solution. We only need one that actually satisfies this differential equation. And then the quote unquote again, general solution will be that particular solution plus anything from the null space, plus the null space. And the null space is, well, Laplacian equals zero. It's the solutions of Laplace's equation. So those we know very, very well. So what we really need to do now is only find a single function that satisfies this differential condition. And then, looking ahead, this won't be a particularly difficult task because I picked a very special right-hand side. But looking ahead, the function that we'll find would have some values on the boundary. And so we have to adjust for those when we're satisfying boundary conditions because the one term that we'll already have will have its own values. So with the null space and all of those coefficients that we're free to adjust, we will have to match not so much the boundary condition as that difference between the boundary condition that we need to have and the boundary values that a particular solution will give us. So basically, the whole solution, just to summarize what I just said in an equation, will look like this, u particular, and I'll write that it's a function of r and theta even though it will be only a function of r, but that's only in this very special case. Plus the null space, which is the summation from n, well, let's stick to complex numbers. The null space. And once I wrote this down, you can see vividly that when we plug in r equals one, in other words, we're looking at the value on the boundary, this one will produce some values on the boundary. So like I just said a moment ago, what this series needs to do for us is to match that differential between what we actually need to have and what this particular solution will give us on the boundary. Okay, so, yes. The solution that produces R cubed. So that's why I'm calling it a particular solution. So. Let's go through this logic again. It will really be linear algebra logic, but I'll use terms as if we're talking about calculus. So if we plug in this expression into this equation, 
what we'll find out is that this part will produce R cubed. So I'm plugging this in into the operator on the left hand side. So this will produce R cubed, but this will produce zero. Because each one of these functions satisfies Laplace's equation as we discovered previously. So this series will not mess up anything in terms of satisfying the differential condition. But these coefficients will give us the freedom to satisfy whatever boundary conditions we want. So that's the strategy. Okay, so I'm going to guess that this function right here can be chosen to be just radial. Do you guys agree with that? Because the right hand side is radial. So I'll just look for capital R of R. And if we plug this in here, then we're getting the ordinary differential equation Is it a linear ordinary differential equation? Yes. So I saw a couple of people shake their heads. That's because this is an inhomogeneous linear differential equation. Right? There is not zero on the right hand side, but it is a linear differential equation. Unfortunately, it doesn't have constant coefficients, in which case the solutions would have been exponentials or complex exponentials or something like that. So it is just a linear ordering differential equation with variable coefficients. So it will have two linearly independent solutions. So here we're once again in that particular solution plus the null space scenario. However, we're going to ignore all of that. We're going to ignore all of that because we don't need to find all possible solutions to the system. We only need one because we're after this particular solution and this AX equals B paradigm as we discussed, any one will do. So we just have to find one. And in this case, you can kind of see that an exponential will work. Do you see that? Because if we try, well, let's see, we've got to drop down to R cubed. So if we try R to the fifth, then this will be five times four, 20 R cubed plus 5R cubed. Do you see that? The derivative will knock down one power and then 1 over R will knock down another. So it'll be 25R cubed. So the solution we're looking for is 1 25th R to the fifth. Do you see how I did that? Because plugging in R to the fifth gave us 25 times what we want. So we should take 1 25th of the original guess. Okay, so I'll write it here, but then I'll use this as an opportunity to pitch you tensor calculus one more time, but hold on. Now, here is another way to have gotten the same simple answer. It's almost not worth it to look for another way. But in this case, I'll just put this sort of structure in your head, which will hopefully want you to find out, will make you want to find out where, where it came from. You will notice that the radial part which is the radial part of the differential operator, can be written in the following form. It can be written like this, 1 over. You see that it's equivalent? If you apply the product rule, you will have two terms. First, you'll have r prime, so 1 over r, r prime. And the second term will be r, capital R, double prime. The r's will cancel, and you're only left with r double prime. Yep. So they're equivalent. So where did this sort of thing come from? So as if some of your physics majors or if you read physics books, you see it written in this form all the time. And there is a very good reason why this is preferred. It's, I, in my mind, it's only preferred because of where it came from. It came from what's called the foss weil formula. So there's Foss-Weil formula, which arises in tensor calculus, which shows you how to calculate the Laplacian in all coordinate systems. There's a formula that works in all coordinate system that involves, it's a beautiful formula, it has partial derivatives and determinants and so forth. And if you ask me what determinant is it, it's that determinant which you find 
when you evaluate volume or area integrals and polar coordinates. Does this ring a bell for someone? There's that Jacobian that equals R that you multiply by, and it becomes R dr d theta. This is that R. And so that formula reads, put R here, take the derivative, put 1 over that Jacobian outside. And so that's where this comes from. It comes from that formula, whose advantage is that it works in all coordinate systems. You just have to interpret it appropriately in all coordinate systems. Okay, so you learn that in tensor calculus, and so that's the formula that you would get. And that's an easy way to derive the, uh, the Laplacian. Because you remember how long it took us to derive this formula. It is, uh, it is a 10 second exercise in tensor calculus. So here we have equals r cubed, right? And now maybe it's a little, I don't know if it's easier to solve, but at least now it's straightforward. What you would do, you would multiply both sides by r, you'll get r to the fourth, then you'll integrate this derivative, you'll get one-fifth r to the fifth, then this r will make it one-fifth r to the fourth, you'll integrate it again, and you'll get one-twenty-fifth r to the fifth. Okay, and all of those constants that were arising as you were integrating, they don't matter because they do. If, that's, if this was our objective, is to find all the solutions, but we only need one. Okay, and so we have... And do you see how this Fourier series, excuse me, this particular solution equals 1 25th on the entire boundary of the circle? So this needs to add up to cosine 2 theta minus 1 25th. So I'm using this particular example to make one general point. In a more general situation, you might have a more complicated right-hand side, so complicated that you might not be able to do this analytically, but you can still use this way of thinking regardless of what method you're using. So you'll find a particular solution You'll look at its values on the boundary. It might be a complicated thing, right? But then all you need to do is just subtract it from these boundary conditions and solve Laplace's equation with these new boundary conditions. And the sum will give you exactly what you want because this will give you the right bulk condition and this will give you the right boundary condition. So to complete this, it needs to be 1 25th r to the fifth plus, and the Fourier series must now equal 1 minus, excuse me, <clears throat> cosine 2 theta minus 1 25th. So of course the Fourier series for that is 1. And you remember the recipe, whatever the boundary condition is, you decompose it into a Fourier series, which is already in that form, and then multiply each term by the corresponding, by r to the corresponding power. So R squared. That's all I have to say about Poisson's equation. And all it really was is an opportunity to discuss the analogy between Poisson's equation and AX equals B. That's all it really was.